Hello friends, um, so today I'll be giving you a little bit of an insight into some lenses that I recommend would be useful for YouTube recordings or perhaps some videography. Um, so I do work as a professional photographer, uh, however this is quite a recent venture for me. I've only been one for about five to six years and I actually work as a full-time musician. And what got me into these lenses or the exploration of um, photography and videography was because I wanted to start to record my own music videos. Um, so today I'm going to give quite an informed overview of um, lenses that would be good in low light and also lenses that give this really nice blur in the background. Now if you're a confident photographer you probably know all the words and um, please assume that I do too uh, but for the purposes of the video I'll be using some very kind of layman's terms so the video appeals to as many people as possible and I will also be demonstrating lenses which have large price ranges. I'm going to do this all in one this video so the l you will lose my visual as I switch lenses however it should only be for about five seconds. I just prefer to do this kind of uh, in one take. Um, lighting, I do have some professional lights but again you might not all um, so I'm using one kind of yellowy looking light bulb directly placed above my camera um, it's only a 40 watt and I'm just going to use that for the whole video so we can get as fair a comparison as possible what I am going to do though is every lens may have a different uh, f-stop so the f-stop basically the lower the number the better it is in low light and the smaller that field of vision it will give so you kind of get more blur around the sides um, so I will be using everything on its lowest settings so you can really get an idea of um, what you like. Okay, so um, the lenses, sh we should be quite organized. There's only five lenses to test. I'm planning to just perhaps do about one minute on each. Um, so it's really nice and time effective for you guys. So let's start off. Uh, the lens that you're watching me on now is this one here. This is the Sony FE 35mm uh, 1.8. So the 1.8 um, aperture means that it's going to be very good in low light. It also means it gives a very nice kind of blur in the background, as you can see. Um, the only thing about this one is 35mm. So if you're working in quite a small room, you would need the camera perhaps about 60 centimeters away from you. So you can get a nice kind of head and shoulders shot with a little bit of blur in the background. OK, let's go on to the next lens. So the next lens I'm going to be using is this. This is the cheapest of them all. Oh, excuse me. The Sony lens you just saw, a 35mm uh, f1.8, that is currently about £509 in the UK. And it's, um, assume we're doing this from very early January 2021. Happy New Year all. Okay, so the next lens is the Samyang. This is the 24mm f2.8. So this would be slightly worse in low light. However, that's not always a bad thing because you can normally adjust the lighting yourself for YouTube videos. And um, this is the cheapest lens of everything I'll be showing. And this is currently on sale for £209. Amazon currently are liking the something £9. So let's have a look at that lens. Uh, it's reminiscent of a pancake lens, which basically means one that fits flat against your camera. OK, so you'll lose my visual for a moment, but that's perfectly fine. Don't worry. Here we go. And I'm just putting on the Samyang lens. So the uh, bonus of... Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's uh, give it perhaps a little help. Is it okay? It's... Yeah. Okay, so after after the change is alright, it's not of native lens. Yeah, so you have to give it a bit of leeway. Plus it's only £209. So the first thing, you see 24mm, a better field of view. You can see my piano slightly more clearly. You can see me more clearly. Let's double check the F setting is correct on this arm. Yes, okay, so it's now on its lowest um, aperture. So it's on 2.8. So you won't get better blur than this in the background at all. Um, the other thing about this lens is that it's the smallest of the lot and the lightest of the lot. Yeah, this is the equivalent kind of Sony lens, or similar, similar Sony lens, uh, that you might use for these things. So this is f1.8, uh, the 35mm you saw. Um, but you can see the size of it compared to some of the others, yeah? We're really kind of going up. But I'll talk about the sizes momentarily. Let's just quickly concentrate on the video, because as I said, we want to spend like one minute maybe on lens. So this is it. You know, it looks perfectly fine. You get a wider field of vision, uh, but you get less blur in the background. Okay. Right, on to the next one. The next one we're going to use is the infamous Sigma 24mm. So uh, we'll stick with the 24mm idea, because there's one here. So you'll be able to see this compared directly to Sigma. However, 
the Sigma is a lot heavier, a lot bigger, and also the Sigma uh, is a lot better in low light, is better in every way really, except the weight category. So let's switch these again, don't worry as you lose your visual, that's fine. Sigma is on. Okay, so that catches the um, visual immediately, which is really good. I, you can see that the brightness is better. This is now on f1.4, uh, as I mentioned, would be on the lowest. It's settled down. It's got itself. The lighting you're seeing on your screen is true to what I have. I, I have quite a yellowy looking room at the moment, but I did mention I want it to be fair so you get the same kind of optic um, ideas and so the piano now is more blurry, which you would expect. I'm pretty much in decent vision. Uh, I'm just going to double check that we are indeed on f1.4. So we weren't. We were on f1.8. Now we're on f1.4. The piano is even slightly more blurry. If I really get my head in there, you can see the background blurs really neatly. And as I come back, so that that's a lovely lens, really. It's a great field of vision um, for this kind of photography. So there's all good news there. Okay, let's switch over to the next. So the next one we're going to use um, a Voltrox adapter for, okay? So I'm going to use a Sigma 35mm 1.4. This is a beautiful lens. I think as far as I remember correctly, this is Sigma's most sold lens. Okay, so, um, well, professional art lens. This is what it looks like. However, it's a Nikon one that I have. So it's not going to fit on this camcorder, this camera. However we can use this Voltrox, a little bit of music there, you get this Voltrox adapter, yeah, looks like that. This is the NFE1, which again is a very common make. Uh, so we're going to take this lens off that we've got. Here we go, going over to the Sigma with the Voltrox adapter, and there's something you're going to notice immediately is that I'm basically out of focus. Yeah, now what's happened there? Right, well, what has happened is that we're using the adapter and the adapter doesn't support autofocus. So I'm going to use the ring to manually make myself passable. Now, the sad thing about this is, is this is perhaps the best lens that I'm testing. Um, but because of the adapter, you can see immediately, the brightness isn't super happy because of the way the it's not electronics connecting immediately to the camera from the lens because we've got a in-between part um, and also that the um, lens is having to be manual focus which is a bit of an issue however if you can get around that if you're not moving much and I don't tend to I either want this on my piano or myself I actually like this lens the best out of all now you can get this lens native for the Sony camera so to get this uh, currently is about 650 pounds now that's not too bad but it is quite pricey when you think the uh, Samyung was a 209 right uh, but it's okay um, so I had this lens anyway for Nikon so I just bought the adapter for 134 pounds and I'm happy with that however I do have to manual focus which is a bit of a bother uh, but you can see straight away for me, there's a clear winner. Look how blurry that background is. It's lovely and creamy, lovely and blurry. If I would like to switch it so you're looking at the piano, you can see immediately it's quite cinematic. I go out of focus. And then if I deliberately rotate the ring quite slowly, you know, that's coming back. I'm manual focusing. So, yeah, there you go. Look, that's, that's pretty nice. It's definitely my favorite lens out of all of the ones we've tried yet. However, the, the lack of having the autofocus for the video... If I had enough money, perhaps I'd just buy the one that's native for Sony. Sorry, not native, the, the one that is uh, built for the E-mount, uh, the Sigma 35 1.4. Okay, and then we've got a few left. So we have uh, a Sigma. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, you're not going to see it, are you? So let me just do my manual focusing act here uh, as best I can. Okay, it doesn't go. There you go. Right, so that is the 12 to 24 mil. Uh, Sigma DG HSM. Now this is the most incredible lens. I love this lens to bits and uh, get a load of the field of view. Okay, again, I've got a nickel one, so it's going to have to use the adapter. You will lose me momentarily. And let's stick on this Sigma lens. Uh, this is a little bit more fiddly. 
Okay, so the Sigma lens, right, is uh, f 4.5 to 5.6. So you're going to see a lot more things in focus immediately. Perhaps apart from my face. Huh, ironically. Where am I? There I am. Okay, great. Um, but obviously there's some huge benefits. This is zoomed in as much as you can get. So I love the fact if you need to, you can show people everything. Now if I zoom out, check out that view. That is good. And what I love about these Sigma lenses is they don't give that typical horrid fisheye effect. As long as I'm back far enough, you know, you can see if I go in like this, put my hands in, you get, you definitely get that fisheye. You can tell it's a bulbous kind of glass. But this is pleasant. When I'm playing, my hands look pleasant. I don't, I don't have huge hands, things like that going on. Um, so there's a lot to be said for this. I love it that this can work with the Voltrox adapter. And then I've just got some final adjustments to do to make sure as I'm as in focus as I want. Uh, now, a little kind of, I think they call it a life hack, <laughs> or maybe a camera hack. Um, if you are using an adapter which does not autofocus when you're doing video, put it on a higher number of the f-stop, because that will mean that you have a lot less human error when you're trying to manual focus. More is in focus. Always good news. Okay, so, and then we go on to our final lens, which is a bit of a dark horse here, okay? So we're going to take the Voltrox off, and this is the most sold Sony lens. So this is, and this will autofocus straight away, this is a Sony 24 to 105 mil. Uh, this is, um, so flagship, interestingly, they often use as the one that is kind of leading the way, the best technology and everything like that. This may not be a flagship lens because that goes to their G Masters. However, this is the lens that Sony recommends to be used with the A7R 4 bodies, uh, like there's no tomorrow, there's no problem with these lenses, they very rarely break, they very rarely have issues, they give nice kind of lighting, uh, you know, I mean they react well to the lighting, and you can see straight away, you know, as I'm going in, it's get catching my hair, coming out, it's catching that. Uh, these lenses are basically totally flat, so there's no strange view of me looking really big or really small. Um, and also, what's really nice on these, I have the option to zoom in. So, now this is the interesting one. When I'm zoomed in, the background starts to look quite nice and creamy. Yeah, as, as you would expect, but obviously if you don't know this, that's fine. So that's what that one looks like. And that's it as extended, that's 24 mil. So that's now the same field of view as the Samyong. These lenses are expensive. On Amazon, they're selling for a thousand pounds. You know, you can get them off Panamods for about 600, and I actually got this in a kit for only 400 pounds, which I'd, I've not actually found anyone that's got a new one of these for 400 pounds. That is the, the absolute cheapest. And I'm on some quite uh, large Facebook groups by like the uh, A7R4 um, Alpha Shooters. You know, come and, come and join us if you are. Uh, or if you have one of those cameras, you know, or, or looking to get one. There's lots of good information. Uh, but that, that is a phenomenal price. So you could wait till Panamals have deals, or if you haven't got the camera yet, grab it with the camera. £400 is a steal. Uh, but normally you'd want to look for this kind of lens about, I'd say, six six £600-ish. Uh, the £1,000 on Amazon? Nah. Nah, do yourself some favours. Find a cheaper one. Okay. Um, so that, for me, I like this. As I get closer in, the blur little other hacks for kind of uh, using these as uh, camcorders kind of thing for videos. As you get closer, you blur the background more. Yeah, so if you want to, you can get really, really close to get this lovely creamy background. If you want your background to kind of be in focus and yourself, push yourself back and then you get everything. Yeah, now the downside of this lens, this is a humongous downside that you'll never get away, right? If you don't have enough light, everything will look grainy. Okay, so this lens is only f.4, um, which at its widest point, which means you, you can't go lower, yeah, in number wise. How, so it, that's a bad thing, because as you get lower in darkness, you will have a huge problem because you won't actually be able to catch your image. So, uh, which one would I recommend? Uh, for me, I, I own the lens that's on, and I love the versatility of the Sony native lens that's an f.4 that's a 24 to 105 mil. That's lovely if you're starting out and you need a lot of variety, that's great. If you want the background to look blurry and you're thinking it doesn't look like other YouTubers, stick the camera way away if you can. Zoom into your face, you'll get the background blurry with this camera, but you need the light. Now for me, you can tell 
uh, this lighting is bad which is kind of why I've used it for the video yeah so views on all of them here's the Sigma this is the Sigma 24 mil I, I love it it's great in low light very very good in low light a uh, big field of view which is good news but yeah it's very heavy very heavy 599 pounds on Amazon pretty expensive if you like it get a use on look at it compared to the Sony 35 mil 1.8 yeah you're only one stop of light where well, you get 1.6 as well but you got a very small difference in light yeah and that's the difference in size if you're just going to be inside which most people are personally I'd actually just go for the Sony and stick it further away yeah it's 509 pounds it's a bit cheaper uh, also I did see one the other day that was 479 on E infinity I think it's called uh, which I bought from once before so that, that that was kind of legitimate you can register those with Sony the one that I got I it says it's grey market but I did register it with Sony and I rang them up and they said you're all good news okay um, so that's my views on those two um, which one I think was the best out of them all this one like there was to me no contest yeah this is the Sigma 1.4 35 mil um, if you can afford it I would Honestly, for, for what I'm using this for, I just say go ahead and get that uh, with an E mount so you can stick it straight onto the Sony. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough money to do that. Uh, plus, I bought all these other lenses <laughs> out of my own money. Um, so I'm using this adapter on it. Uh, and it, it suits me okay because I don't need the autofocus facility for this setup. Yeah. By the way, if you're using that as a just take photos, right? and then you use that you can auto focus absolutely fine pushing the button down it's lightning quick as well and it's beautiful in low light so it good good for astro photography as well if you'd like to works well with the adapter in astro too um for me yeah i'd i'd do that option uh and then this huge one i think if you don't want a gopro and things like that that will give you massive reaches uh these sigma wide angle lenses are beautiful they they're really good they they're mostly sharp in the middle well they are sharp in the middle uh they will blur a bit at the edges that's the characteristic of the lens don't worry about that if you want less blur you can put your f um stops in a higher number eventually you'll reach a point where it's like terrible uh, but the higher number you go basically the better it will get until there's this obvious like oh dear I won't do that again um they're nice yeah that that's really nice that's a solid lens so all good news there and then finally the one that's on yeah so the the 24 to 105 that that's pleasant um <coughs> so yeah that's that's pretty much most of it uh however we have then the samyong yes so just to remind us if you're on a budget and you really need a prime lens i'll just show you before we finish so let's put that samyong back on because there is the vast difference of the cost yeah when that's on you can see straight away right it's not bad at all it's not bad in the slightest it's nice captures my face captures my piano camera is sitting currently yeah so you know for the whole of the video camera has been sitting 65 centimeters away from me okay i can play my piano you can see it don't forget that these sony a7r4s you've got a cropping feature as well so i've got it set to a top button so a little shout out to Mark Smith there, very good for setting up your camera, if you'd like to follow him, amazing bird photographer as well, actually just amazing photographer all around, lovely, lovely guy, he commented a few times back to me for some things and seems very genuine. Um, you can press this button and like super straight away, you're zoomed in, yeah? When you zoom in like that, it won't change your blur. What you want to do to zoom in, if you want to change your blur, get your head closer, then your blur will go more, okay? <laughs> okay, so it's called Bokka, the blur, just in case everyone's thinking, why does he say blur? But like I said, I want it to appeal to a lot of people. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been informative. Uh, these are my findings. I'm actually going to watch this video back as well to see what I think about it, okay? Um, how this has been recorded is I've gone through the Sony capture faci facility straight into OBS and then recording from OBS. So you will see an image which perhaps is not super tack sharp. But I, I promise you this this is really sharp what's in focus it, it is great so for example how you'd get that is perhaps not going through OBS uh, what you do is just pop your SD card in take your video SD card straight into the computer then you watch it it's going to look lovely and sharp yeah the only reason it might not be tax sharp for me is because I've gone through another program before uploading to uh, YouTube I'm recording this in 1080p deliberately at um, uh, well actually it's, it's 50p here so it's 50p 50m uh, that's why I'm recording uh, according to the Sony A7R4. 
yeah so it's just nice and simple for upload easy for people to see and you can kind of get an idea of what you like thank you very much for watching my video and um perhaps you might see me again for some musical ones um and uh yeah thank you very much and i'll see you again soon thank you